today we begin our um, introduction into graphing uh, professionally and when I say graphing professionally um, I do have students who came from uh, 136 and I think one of the first things you learned was that you have to know how to graph a line the higher you go and this is the point where you have to make sure you get this process down um, it's going to start off with a form that we call slope intercept form uh, this is a major lesson uh, so the video might take some time because it is, of course, tomorrow and because of Monday also. Uh, you're going to get an extra day to work with it, so tomorrow is a review day. Just be sure to take good notes, otherwise you're going to begin to fall behind. Um, and by good notes, it means I don't really collect your notes anymore, but I know whenever you're not taking good notes because the questions you ask, they do say there is no such thing as a stupid question, but when you ask me something that I know I directly put into the video, it means that you probably didn't write it down and that you should go back and review it again to make sure that you got everything. Um, so this quarter is shortened because of finals, so there's only two days designated for catch-up. That includes tomorrow, so you have to make sure you make the most of each day or plan on putting in extra time by coming in early, staying late. Keep in mind, next week is a short week, and then your test is still the third week of the quarter, so you might want to make sure you're starting to you know, do something to get caught up, especially if you're still on four point or five point one and you have nothing on five point two so other than that slope intercept form uh, an equation of lines in slope intercept form when the slope and the y intercept are directly visible what that means is they put the slope and the y intercept notice the word slope and intercept um, they put them directly into the equation the general equation is y equals mx plus b the way you identify this general equation is that y is alone uh, we will use this to our advantage later, but again, the way you use this, or the way you identify slope-intercept form is that y is alone. In this equation, m is the slope, so that's going to now be your, uh, in terms of this unit, that will always represent rate of change or slope, and b represents your y-intercept. You have to memorize those two things because that is something that's going to be uh, very important. And uh, you need to memorize, I guess I said it here on the part already, that it is the biggest piece of success in the lesson. Uh, graphing a line in slope intercept form is as easy, is easy as long as you know how to apply the key information. The first piece of key information is what is B. The Y intercept tells you how far to go up or down on the Y axis. If B is positive, move up by that amount. If B is negative, move down by that amount. This must be the first value that you use when you graph, otherwise you are not going to be able to do it correctly. The way I would think about it is B alphabetically comes before M, so use B first, M second. What I see a lot of students do who do it wrong is they go straight to M and then they go to B. The first thing you want to identify when you graph a line in slope intercept form is identify B and plot it. Again, B goes up or down because if you think about the graphing part here's your x-axis here's your y-axis and your y-intercept is going to be somewhere on this part here alright and we'll talk about that in a second M represents the rise over run or the slope so you have to now apply rise over run by simply going from the first point you plotted and using your rise over run to go from there remember if your slope is positive you will go if this is my point my first point you will go up and to the right because we always run to the right if your slope is negative you will go down and to the right but again you will always go to the right there are only a few situations where you don't go to the right but I will discuss those with you before it happens so until that point make sure you run to the right I know I'm going to have someone come up and <laughs> go the wrong direction but it's okay just make sure you work on memorizing you always run right always run right so look at some examples real fast uh, you have y equals two-thirds x minus four. Identifying this as my equation here, I have y equals mx plus b. And remember, I go to b first. The b value here is negative four. And because the b value is negative four, this is telling me to, that my y-intercept is negative four. Again, this is my y-axis, and negative four on the y-axis is here. Okay, so again, the first thing I do is look at b, recognize that b is negative four, which tells me to go down four. The second thing I do is look at M, which is my slope, and it's two-thirds. Two-thirds means rise two, run three. So from that point, do not start at zero, zero, but always from this point, you now rise two, kind of like you're playing Monopoly. So one, two, up, 
and then one two three over putting your second dot down again put your pencil on the dot first that does not count but put your pencil on that dot rise two run three that's your second dot from there you will either need to buy a uh, um, ruler uh, get an ID get something of a straight edge out I guess some of you have cards but you do need to draw straight lines in this unit and let me just give you a way to make a straight edge if you don't want to buy one and you don't mind wasting paper or getting a piece of paper out of the uh, recycling bin all you have to do to make a straight edge my chemistry teacher taught me this his name was Mr. Haig he was a great chemistry teacher take a piece of paper and fold it twice really works but just for safety fold it three times but twice does work and what it provides for you now is an edge that is straight and you simply use that to draw a line and here is the rule from here on out we didn't really do it the first unit because you didn't know but your line must cover every part of that grid do not draw a line some of you like to draw lines that if these two are the points you draw a line like this notice it doesn't go all the way across the grid notice that I did not stop drawing until I ran out of space I did not stop drawing until I ran out of space so make sure your line goes all the way across the grid because if it does not then I am going to take partial credit away from you so make sure your line goes across but again any any piece of paper can be used to um, make a straight edge for you to draw that line if your line is not straight and it definitely looks crooked I am going to take partial credit so make sure you draw your line the way it's supposed to be that way you get all of your credit that way you start getting your habits right and when you get to your next teacher they do not complain about the fact that you are not following the the protocol for graphing a line and as I said some of you know what I'm talking about because I've heard it next door um, graph y equals negative one-fifth x plus two again the first, we want, first thing you want to do is identify b remember this is my y-intercept and since my y-intercept is positive two it means I want to go on the y-axis to where positive two is the second thing I recognize is that my rise over run is negative one-fifth this means rise negative one which means go down one run five which is always to the right so from here I go down one over one two three four five second dot straight edge yes I have to turn my paper a little bit but again what I want to do is make sure my line goes all the way out of the grid before I stop drawing it I'm not going to mark you wrong if your line is slightly off of the dots I understand the human error on that but I will again mark you wrong if you take two points and these are the kinds of lines I see and you can definitely see it that's not straight now if you are good enough to draw a perfectly straight line I say tch, you can try it and hopefully you don't get caught but if you do get caught don't get upset I know what a straight line looks like you know what a straight line looks like make sure you give me a straight line so you get your points um, for your notes though it doesn't matter again for tests and quizzes you just want to make sure you use your straight edge graph y equals 3x plus 1 again b here is 1 this means that my y-intercept is 1 is telling me to go on the y-axis to where 1 is my slope is 3 the thing with this is that it's rise over run working backwards remember that as a fraction this would have been 3 over 1 which means rise 3 run 1 or you could just remember that you always have to run at least 1 go up 3 and then just go over 1 but from here we go up 3 over 1 second dot get your straight edge and draw your line all the way outside of those regions for your full credit graph y equals negative x minus 4 here that is my y-intercept negative 4 which tells me to go down 4 I have to use that first because that is the most important part I cannot do rate of change without a point to start from here negative x is the same as negative 1x which means that my rate of change is negative one negative one as a fraction is negative one over one which tells me to rise negative one and run one or if you remember again this means go down one but we always have to run at least one so from here we go down one over one put the second dot and then draw the line through that all the way across the region for our points Okay. 
So that's one thing that you're going to be asked to do is to graph a line. That actually is one of the most important parts because again, graphing lines is, uh, I guess, after about another month or two, it's going to be expected that you know how to graph a line in every single class you go to. Uh, the teachers might review it a little bit, but you have to make sure you have the foundation down so they don't have to reteach everything because they really should not have to. It is very basic. Uh, writing an equation of a line. In order to do that, we must be able to identify the slope and y-intercept. We learned how to identify slope Monday in section 5.1, but the y-intercept is also pretty easy to find. Let's look at some problems together. Again, what you will see is a question that says, write the equation for this line. So we understand that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. We also understand that y and x are going to be there. Our job is to identify m and b. Now if you remember I told you you need two good points and when you look at this this is definitely a good point so I will mark that. Not a good point here. I think there is another good point right here. And so what we do is once we have those two good points think back to Monday. Start from the leftmost point. Your rise is negative 1. Your run is 1, 2 which means that m is one ha negative 1 half. And easy enough, your y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. And if you look at where it crosses the y-axis, here's 0, 1, 2, 3. So it means that your b is equal to 3. Again, this is crossing the y-axis at 3. So b is 3. It's simply working backwards from what we just did. And our final answer would be y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. Just to check that, here this would tell me to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, which is where I am down 1 over 2 which is where I ended up that's all so again to do this you simply have to find a slope which we know how to do find the y-intercept which is simply saying where is it across the y-axis put those two things into an equation looking at the second question B again you know it's y equals mx plus B because that's slope intercept form the two good points one good point is typically on the y-axis which is here and then we kind of look and say, yep, here's another one there. Rise over run is up 2 over 1, which means that 2 is my m. My y-intercept here, again, it crosses the y-axis at 1, 2, 3 down, which means that b is negative 3. And my final answer is y equals mx, which is 2x minus 3. Again, to check, down 3, 1, 2, 3, up 2 over 1. There's my answer. C, y equals mx plus b. Here's a good point. Here's a good point. Notice you have a whole bunch of good points. My rise is negative 1. My run is over 1, which means negative 1 is my slope. My y-intercept, though, doesn't cross anywhere above or below, which means in this case b is 0. Now, you will initially think y equals negative x because remember we don't write the 1 plus 0 but we really don't write the plus 0 which means that your actual answer is y equals negative x don't put negative 1x now you can I'll count it right on the quiz but I'm not sure if math xl is going to allow you to do um, that and still get it right I've seen math xl mark people wrong for a lot of different reasons so writing negative 1x might be the reason why it's marking you wrong but if you do miss it, just bring it up and I'll try to help you out. Again, they're looking for the equation, which is y equals mx plus b. Find two good points. Again, one good point is typically on the y-axis. No, 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 yes here. Up 1, 2, 3. Over 1, 2. So it's y equals 3 halves x. We just got to find b. And notice that this crosses at negative 2, which means that my answer is y equals 3 halves x minus 2. Next thing you'll be asked to do in this lesson is to write an equation given two points. Uh, this is very similar to direct variation which is why we went through the direct variation process. Uh, if you remember that direct variation had two jobs. Uh, the first thing was to find k and then we had to use k to find the other thing. Keep the same mindset when working through a problem like this. So if it says write an equation given two points make sure that you keep in mind you have two jobs your first job or more jobs actually I think it's three if when you think about it the first job is to find a slope the way you find slope is to reply is to apply the skill we learned Monday on 5.1 
after we find the slope we plug it in for m the second job is to plug in y m and x and you'll see that you have all three of those and then use algebra to find b and then after that you have your final answer the general idea is written here again for those of you who like to take good notes I would write these three steps and if you ask me for help today and you do not have those three steps written down don't expect for me to help you because I'm gonna send you back to the video and you're gonna to have to write this down because this is the hardest thing of the day uh, it's actually one of the hardest things that a lot of students have to do so again at least write those down especially if you think you might be asking for help from me later but the first step is find M again that is using the formula I don't care if you remember how to find M I just need to see these three steps but the first thing you must do is find M the second thing you do is plug in Y M and X you use that to find B and then third step is to write your final answer so let's look at some problems here before we move on to the work for the day I think I have three examples and you will see hopefully again as long as you're up to speed you will see it's not so bad as what we thought the first thing I told you is that whenever we have two points I make a table and I'm even doing the shortcut table because I already know what slope is keep in mind slope was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 I told you that this meant second y minus first y second x minus first x keeping in mind that this is my x and my y my second y is 6 minus 3 over 2 minus 0 which means that my slope is 3 over 2 that is piece number one again the first thing we have to do is find M that's what we had up here now it says plug in Y M and X to find B now you notice we have two points but what I usually do is just pick a point I'm going to go ahead and pick this one because it's not simple as uh, having a zero for X and most of your problems are going to be like this so I'm going to just pick a point and the way I pick that point is I circle it and using that remember that X goes first Y goes second I write the formula y equals mx plus b as my initial kind of springboard and then I plug in what I know kind of like I did with the direct variation so y in this case is 6 equals m is 3 over 2 x is 2 and then plus b because I do not know what b is and now we do algebra why did I work on multiplying whole numbers times fractions because you're going to have to do that so 6 equals 6 over 2 plus b 6 divided by 2 is 3 plus b using algebra now subtracting 3 I get the answer of 3 for b so going back again I plugged in my information I simply multiplied the 2 which isn't hard I reduced the fraction which really isn't hard I moved the number to find b and then step 3 says write your final answer if it's y equals mx plus b we understand that y is going to get rewritten again m is what we found earlier which is 3 halves times x plus b we found to be 3 so all you do is you take your m value and plug it in here you take your v b value and plug it in there and that is how you find your final answer two jobs find m and then use a point and the m to find b and simply plug them in and go from there again yes it is a little bit of work but I think that it's within your range as long as you are um, disciplined enough to make sure you are writing this down and that you ask questions with those notes that I gave you earlier and I can kinda keep you on track and if not again I think after a week or so of working on this you should be okay but you should at least be able to answer the basic one um, after today or after tomorrow write an equation line passing through the points negative 2 4 and 2 negative 1 again I write this down I put my two points in I am not going to make the ta or write the formula because muscle memory says it's negative 1 minus 4 over 2 minus negative 2. Double negative here means it switches. Negative 5 on top, 4 on the bottom. That is M. Okay. Next thing I do is I pick a point. Yes, I'm going to go back to the first because I usually always pick the first point anyway. The reason if you really if you again don't remember. I said I did not pick the first point here because it wouldn't have been good for your um, practice. Zero, 03 would have been a nice easy answer and I didn't want to do that for your notes but I typically always pick the first point anyway. So, and what we do is we again write the springboard y equals mx plus b. 
we look and recognize that y is 4. m is negative 5 over 4 times b or x which is negative 2 plus b. That is y, that is x. We plug those in. We then multiply here. Negative 2 times negative 5 fourths is positive 10 over 4 plus b. 10 over 4 does not reduce. And it's a good thing that we did all that fraction work because right now is where we will use it. The good news is, even better, is that we only have one number to get rid of, so we multiply everything by 4. <clears throat> we end up with 16 equals. Keep in mind the 4's cancel. 10 plus 4b. Now you solve. Minus 10, minus 10, 6 equals 4b, divided by 4, divided by 4. 6 over 4 reduces to be 3 over 2, which is your letter for b. And again, in the end, you simply take these two things and plug them in. M is here. B is there. You took your M and plugged it in. You took your B and plugged it in. And that is your answer. It is one of the most tough things that kids do, but once you get the process down, once you understand, find M, write the formula, plug in one point, do the algebra it's not as bad as what it seems it just takes work which is why I said to make sure you visualize this kind of like what you did yesterday with the direct variation because that's really all it is you do a job you get the first information you get the second information you plug in some stuff you get the answer last example negative 3 3 and 1 2 again this minus that 2 minus 3 over 1 minus negative 3 these two double negative switch 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 1 plus positive 3 is 4. So negative 1 fourth is my slope. Now what I do is um, y equals mx plus b because that is my starting point. I choose typically again my first point. y in this first point is 3 equals negative 1 fourth which is m times negative 3 which is x plus b. You then multiply this up. Again this gives me 3 positive 3 fourths plus b. If you are in the situation where you have a fraction, remember we simply multiply everything by that fraction, getting 12 equals, because the numbers are the same, those cancel 3 plus 4b. Subtract your 3, getting 9 equals 4b. Divide by 4, getting 9 over 4 for b. Take those two answers, plug them back into the original, y equals negative one-fourth x plus 9 over 4. So again, your job is to find m, and then use m and a point to find b, and then simply plug those into your final answer. Now, a lot of the questions that you have will not give you fractional slopes, but I felt like if I did not give you those in your notes, then you wouldn't have any kind of... Um, ideas or strategies on how to deal with the fractions I think a lot of times they give you slopes that are like 2 and 5 and negative 5 and you will see that some of those will be much easier to work with but again you do now have all the information you need to go so please begin working on math excel for the day uh, remember that you must hand in your work for the B quizzes uh, for those of you who might be trying to be stubborn and saying I'm not going to turn anything into you at all because I don't want to get up and hand you a piece of paper for credit um, then you're just going to keep having a zero in the book because the only time I put it in the book now for B is when you hand me the sheet of paper. I'm not looking at the grade book anymore for B. So you telling me that you got a 50% or a 90% or 100% on B, I'm not going off of that. I am going off of you did not hand me a sheet of paper that had your uh, B grade on it that matched up to a quiz on there. So just be careful and uh, good luck today. And again, you have a review day tomorrow, so start working and then kind of see what you can do.